Welcome to Shiny Side Out with Dave and, well, no Mechie yet. He'll probably be joining us at the first hour. Broadcasting from Australia for Revolution Radio on freedomslips.com, where it's more than just a radio station. So jump into the chat room if you can. This is show number, you can't believe it, it's 262. This is, this is the first show of the new year for us, the sixth year. Last week concluded the fifth year on air with Revolution Radio. And here we are, extraordinarily still going still going thank you zippy yo thank you jerry and let me see there was an, one other that and uh ds you let me know thank you very much it's just a miracle a miracle let me see and i'm missing something else i'm missing my lighting there we go i've got lighting now oh boy it never ends I'll tell you. All right. Let me finish the intro. Uh, this is show number 262. It's on air, online, and on your smart device. So grab an app to listen anywhere or listen at home on a Grace Tabletop digital radio. Apologies, Hawk. If you missed Solaris' show, and it was a good show, it really was. Now, she'd mentioned to me earlier who she had on just wait a second there caller um she said and i couldn't even i couldn't even listen to it because uh, i was off doing something else goodness me let me see oh i can't even i can't go back that far Oh yes, Cheryl Costa, she had on today. Thank you very much, Solaris, uh, for warming up the crowd, as you do every single week with a great show. You should get yourself uh, $5 access to the Revolution Radio archives. That gives you access to everybody's archives. It's only 5 bucks a month, the cost of a cup of coffee. Well, it's like five fifty here for a cup of coffee. If it is a big one. Not like the 20-ounce cup that I've got. You should go to zazzle.com forward slash shiny side out for our mug that you see me hold up to the camera every single week. I don't have it with me this week. I wasn't prepared. I've said it before. All right, so um, next. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the dark and young people, and pay respects to elders past, present, and future. So thank you. Um... I wish that I was as good a caretaker of the land as you were. My land, uh, only one and a half acres of it in the bush, is uh, is actually really difficult to take care of. Because I'm not allowed to burn it, you see. I can't just burn it to get rid of all of the nasties. I have to get a, a brush cutter out. And I've even got a brush cutter now with carbon fiber line. It's nice. I don't cut to wear anything. So... Uh, yeah but that's like every single weekend i have to do that yeah thanks to the humid conditions the most rain we've had i think we had a month rain already for this month of march 2017 already a couple of days there we had 100 mil in a row and then 50 mil otherwise extraordinary drenching we've been getting here on the east coast and i don't think we're I haven't seen the end of it although we saw the that weird thing in the sky and it's big round and hot and uh, the sky is blue. Not used to that. Very funny. All right. So, done that bit. Done this bit. Thank you so much to everyone who reminded me as well. Now, I've got a caller. This is area code 575. You're on the air. David. How are you doing? It's Eagle Eye. Hey, Eagle Eye, you saved my butt yeah <laughs> it's good to hear your voice good to hear my good to hear your voice how you been my friend yeah I'm pretty good this is a uh the, it's the surprise show you see because you know daylight saving time why even have it i mean it doesn't fade the curtains 
Why yeah. are they doing daylight savings time? <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. And it wasn't us that changed. It was in the US somewhere that they changed the time zone on me. And it, and it happens every year. Like we, we get four changes. We get the US mm -hmm. one and then we get the Australian one. And then we got them switching back again. And they, they don't coincide at the same time. They're weeks apart. <laughs> and it, it honestly, it does your head in. I don't know how anyone's supposed to cope with it. You know what? I, I came up with a theory today. And that was mm -hmm. that uh, it's only there to keep interest in, in life. Because otherwise it would just be the same time all year round. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they want you to keep adjusting your, your REM sleep, Dave. You yeah, know, I know. It, it, Keep you off balance. Once you get it comfortable, they try to like you know make sure you get it set up again and again and again. So, it's, <laughs> at it's least like, for me here, <laughs> it's like being oh, in ahead. a constant. It's like being in a constant state of jet lag. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about um, removing it here in the mountain time zone where I'm in the U.S. Oh, I don't good. Know if you've heard about that, nope. Hopefully that legislation can get through and we'll send it over to you in Australia. It, I saw a very funny clip that someone has done about mm -hmm. daylight saving time. And mm -hmm. be careful not to make it plural because it isn't. Everyone calls it savings. Well, there's no savings right. at all. It's not, you don't even save. It's just a, they just jostle you around just when you get used to it. There you go. Now, oh, Zippy2718. No, this is not a recording. This is live. This is live radio. Exactly what you expect to hear on Revolution Radio. Um, uh, there's a very funny, very funny sketch that I think it might have been College Humor. They do a really good uh, sketches. And it was, it's to do with Daylight Saving. And it's filmed. And the music and the directing and editing style is done just as though it's a horror story it's very funny like it's the end of the world and but it's only daylight saving it's very funny you should see it if only if only i could play it i can't that would probably be some kind of heavy infringement i'm not going to touch it um not even to mock it but at eagle eye so what on earth is going on in your neck of the woods <laughs> thanks for asking because it's been crazy you know up and down all around how do we say it but you know we try to keep the balance you know we try to we try to take the middle road there that's that's where i ride the center path you know but man david it's been you know the political scene's been kind of crazy i mean mm. uh, uh, what do you think about the most recent release of bin seven did, did that start strike a chord with you Oh, absolutely. In, in fact, so um, so Vault Vault Seven is uh, the release of those documents. It was very funny because I think everyone just expected it to have already been the case anyway. It's it was no different than uh, you know if a if a friend of yours who was always fastidious and always liked to clean and and always kept himself immaculate and and then they said to you oh um you know i'm coming out i'm gay and you go sort of knew that anyway right there's no surprise. Right. i'm sorry but there's no surprise right. well that this that's exactly the way that i think everyone has felt with the vault 7 release I mean, everyone that listens to Revolution Radio is no doubt already across the fact that the government's been spying on you since they could spy on you. And that technology, there was nothing in technology. I, I have to, I'll just wind it back a step, right? I had, I had a friend of mine that wrote an encryption program that was eventually uh, visited. It was visited by the men in black, he lives in the US, and they said to, well, not even men in black, but the, you know, FBI, the truck with all the aerials on top, the porcupine van, uh, visited him and eventually said, you've got to give us a key to your encryption, a way we can get in to any file that you're sending. Because we're seeing, what? we're seeing, seriously. Why would they say that? 
Well, they because he was sending, you know, he made an, his own encryption. And he was sending around everywhere and they couldn't get into it. And they said, well, we can lock you up for the rest of your life or you can give us the key, your choice. And so he gave them the key. I won't ever name who it is, but he gave them the key and he never heard from them again. And he never went to jail and he can live a happy life. Eventually, that same encryption, encryption program that he'd written uh, was uh, um, you know, incorporated into other software, which uh, I can't name either. But anyway, uh, having said that, uh, he became wealthy enough not to have to worry about anything anymore from the sale of his encryption program. Encryption uh, being the, the ultimate word here. Now, as soon as he told me that story, and this was f maybe 15, 18 years ago, it was right leading up to the, the year 2000. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm glad that you, you know, you made the right choice there because I think the alternate choice of going to jail for the rest of your life was probably bad because uh, he was, they used the argument that it's a threat to the, the national security. And that seems to make total sense. Yeah. Makes sense from, yeah. from the government's point of view, right? They really do want to see what's going on and it would be disappointing, um, you know, to see him either accidentally suicide, which is common, or, you know, just never see him again. However, mm. um, this is the problem. If they approached him, they've approached all of them. And if they approached all of them, then they've got the key to everything. And they seem to have had the key to everything for a long time. Yeah, yeah, Dave, you are so correct. And you know what this makes me think about was, the the case with uh, Tim Cook and Apple, yeah, didn't didn't did this and it sounds like you were ahead of your time with some of your programmers way before it even came to the mainstream, you know. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the situation with Apple and the courts kind of brought to light what really was going on um, in a different kind of way. What did you think about that? Well, it's funny that you should mention it because the head of McAfee said give me the phone and in 20 minutes i'll give you all of the data off it now that's oh, wow that's the head of mcafee is it john john mcafee that's what he said he said just give me the phone forget it and apple is saying oh there's no way you can get into it what a crock what an absolute lying piece of work the apple corporation is to suggest that their phones aren't hackable and you notice that vault 7 was really all about samsung it, that's kind of like a quote like saying water's not drinkable yeah <laughs> right oh, no but your water isn't mine is you know <laughs> oh, okay yeah, yeah right, you, right. You, you, that water topic. over there that water over there you can't drink that but didn't you just <laughs> fill your thing up from it yeah but this is my water my say my water's different um and so you know, I'm a, I have to say, and I've always been a Samsung fanboy. I don't really care. Yeah. And I've always assumed that we were always being spied on and it didn't make any difference. The moment we found the NSA DLL in Windows back in Windows XP, we thought we were onto something. We knew that there must have been a reason for that. And when you look back in time, you'll find that Microsoft at the time were in negotiations or discussions with the government and that a bill was passed and then suddenly this DLL pops up and what does it do? Well, we only theorize what it was able to do and that was give the person, you know, uh, a full telemetry of what was going on if they chose to from the NSA full access to everything windows 10 right now every time you open up a file it takes a copy of that file and writes it into a place you can't get to inside windows 10 inside your profile in windows 10. so I, sub encryption within 
the no, hardware. No, it's not even encryption. Un- undetectable. No, no, it's, it's undetectable. <laughs> this is undetectable for the user and completely invisible. So you open up a Word document and you close it. You open it up from a USB stick or an email or whatever you did, and it's squirreled away a copy of that inside a folder inside your profile on your computer, which you can't get to. I only discovered this by accident, and this is recently. So we were trying to, we were doing huge tests to see how big things could get, and we threw some large files on a, on a PC and noticed the doubling of the used space. We couldn't understand it. Did some tests, decided to copy the profile away to somewhere else just to examine it as part of our testing, and we found there's the file. Hang on, why is the file over there? We didn't put it there. And then we had a look, and there's the history of everything we'd opened during that testing phase with a, you know, a blank user just doing some Windows tests. And then we found the same files on everyone's PCs. This is at work. So what does that mean? It means that anything you wanted to do on your PC that you think is reasonable, like we have our show notes for our show, Shiny Side Out. So when I open up that, it's downloaded in Skype, goes to one folder, I open it, and it's immediately copied to another folder. So it doesn't matter if I think I've deleted the file, I haven't, it's still a copy of it. So this is the one thing, that's from a Windows point of view. I think they changed the ball game. So it's not just spying, but they're being able to look at these files offline, and they've got a full copy of them. So not, not Offline, it, for the listeners, Dave, let repeat that. Oh, they I'm sorry. That offline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, I mean that while I'm not using the computer, and right. during the session that I've used the computer in, and whilst I've logged off, I'm the computer still online on the network. It's on the internet. Well, they can they could then, you know, detect that I wasn't using a computer anymore, and they'd have field day. You know, and have a look through all the stuff I looked at. Now, this is good if you're doing something wrong. If you if you're breaking the law. Right. then I think that's a criminal issue and good on them. If you're not breaking the law... But they're they're then an I, honest person. You're, you're righteous and you've got nothing to hide. So, well, I don't. Right? But there are, there's, do certainly, I. Yeah, there's certainly people out there uh, who aren't going to be as maybe as righteous or, or maybe not so nice. It, most people do something wrong, whether they jaywalk or they'll, you know, where it says no U-turn, they might do a U-turn. Someone's going to, they're going to do something. And it's very difficult in this world that we live in to not misbehave. The, the Mecky talks about the panopticon, which is that prison that you're in, although there's no guards or, or anything to, to keep you in there. There's no bars, but you're there. Nonetheless, you've been taught to to be there and obey. Mackie always brings up the, um, you know, if there's a set of traffic lights in the middle of the desert and you can see in all the directions and there's no one there and the light turns red as you approach, do you stop? My answer is, yep. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Yep. And I'm going to stop and wait till it turns green. <laughs> I, right. Right. And that goes beyond Ivan Pavlov, right? Operant conditioning. Yes, absolutely. Well, this is the, the hard part of this acceptance of what they can do. So what, what can the governments of the world do? Well, they can do anything they want according to their own rules. So whether or not they had permission to do it, or there was some, an order given to do it, they're still doing it nonetheless because they have Don't they bots. have to tell us first? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Don't they have to tell us first though? Wasn't that, isn't that their rule, Dave? Well, they'll usually advertise that they can do stuff and then they'll do it to you anyway. What do you think Vault 7 was all about? The, in, in, my, in, in my impression of what's happening is that there are programs, automatic programs that are already sifting through all this telemetry, looking for the things that would make you a target. Once you're a target, just like the, you know, you say the, the right number of keywords on a telephone call or a Skype call, or on a handwritten fax to anybody, you say the right number of things, you, you become a target or a person of interest. Then 
after showing that that's continuing and then that it wasn't just a one-off, you'll probably be observed still by a computer or maybe even a human. They'll build a, con a connection diagram with you and all of your friends. They know who you are and who you're communicating with. And then they can draw a picture of you. Now, they've got sentiment analysis now, not only on text, because that's pretty easy. And if I, if I had to ask you a question, once you install, say, a nice little application like Grammarly, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I use it. It doesn't find very much, but what it, what it does find, I, I like the way it's teaching me to not come up with red lines underneath stuff now when I when I write my papers. However, you mentioned key you mentioned keywords, David. I don't and, want to and, say and the keywords, like, but you know, yeah, you and, have and, you have to only say a number of them. If you mm -hmm. said um, any leader of any country and uh, something that you might have seen on Mythbusters and a date of some kind and a place, mm -hmm. you're going to put yourself on a list and that list is right. not going to be favorable to you. You'll be observed. You might, and these days you won't hear clicking on and off on a phone. You know, these days you won't notice the observations because... And where Where's all this information going, Dave? Well, to your best of knowledge. Well, just let before I answer that, I wanted to say the okay, vault, okay. the Vault Seven uh, leak suggests that you know cameras can get turned on and off at will. The microphone in your in your you know cell phone can get turned on and off at will should they want to listen. The the television that you have can be hacked to simply watch you if it's got a camera, if it's one of those smart TVs with a camera so you can do Skyping from it. Remember, when it looks good and you might use it as a nice new feature, think about how they can use it on you. That's something I'm not that I'm not paranoid enough to worry about it. Right. But the camera right. can Me the, neither. the camera can get turned on without the little light coming on. Ah. So, um, for instance, the, the company Lenovo, which I don't have any connection with at all. Thanks, Steve. I'll um, answer that second. The, um, the Lenovo's have a little physical sliding, uh, like a slider, that slides across in front of it like an aperture closes the lens off, like a lens cover. So if you have a laptop or a, an all-in-one PC, it's got a camera built in, there's a little slidey switch that'll push a piece of plastic over the camera. I know so many people that put, you know, a post-it note or a little flap of paper that they can, they can then choose to use when they want to use it. And I think about it, when they do that, how paranoid must they be to think, because they think that I can look at that. I, I'm an administrator of computers at a company. I'm an IT manager. And to think that they can, I can do that on them is preposterous. We have rules and rule sets and a quite, uh, a, let's, let's call it honorable. It's not something that I'm um, going to do. I'll lose my job if I was to do it anyway, but I don't have the technology to do it. There isn't an application we can run just to go and spy on people. It's infringement of privacy. And, uh, and I'd be fired and sued personally by them. But anyway, having said that, um, so Vault 7 Leak describes the, the hacking or the tools that have been created to hack into all these devices. And it's interesting that WikiLeaks has said we're going to approach each one of those vendors uh, because they didn't post everything, by the way. It's only like 10 or 15% of what they had and they only posted the things that led you down this path not the actual you know programs so apparently it was there was more information that they were willing to do uh, but unwilling to put themselves into a position where that could be changed however um, if they approach the vendors i think the vendors are already in bed with the governments anyway so who cares it's, I think it's just going to continue. But to answer your question before, Eagle Eye, and it was a good question, it was where does all the information go? The Utah facility. The NSA has, has a huge 
collection of uh, servers and data mining big data and they can find trends and things and and stuff that you don't want to even know our government here in australia has created a brand new layer to get to the internet you've got to go through this one company oh and it's government owned so that every single piece of everything goes through that company and it's called nbn co yeah. it sounds like a great thing is sold to us like it's going to make the internet unbelievably fast well that's not the design the true design is to filter everything every single person that i've spoken to the nbn about have agreed to me and these are technical people who have worked on projects around this new product just imagine that in the us imagine that there was only one company that delivered all of the technology to everybody but you could buy it from anyone you wanted and if you did a if you did a, like a trace of how your data gets through to the internet you would always find this one server in place regardless of which provider you chose doesn't that raise your questions doesn't it raise your your yeah. thoughts that you are being monitored that everything's being copied and and uh you know combed through for something on you right right and and i think this the system that that they're using in the government the nsa i think it's a quantum computer and what i understand maybe dave you can help the audience listen what is a zeta byte because it seems like it's a whole another form of technology and storage that they're using um in this quantum computer and it's called a zeta byte and they're using it at buffdale utah okay well, I know, I know petabyte, but zettabyte is a multiple of the unit byte for digital information. See, right. And from what I, from what I understand, is they're opening folders and folders and folders within folders, and they've got seven billion processing brains per second working for us against <laughs> us with us. <laughs> Interesting. Huh? It's a zettabyte is one sextillion which is the long scale of trillion bytes six trillion bytes that's that's big it's yeah yeah it's a billion a billion terabytes equals a trillion gigabytes all right but um one zettabyte which is oh, a thousand to the seventh power bytes or 10 to the 21 bytes uh which is uh one with one two three four, well it's got so many, too many zeros to even bother about it's a thousand exabytes which equals a million petabytes it's big it's so big so it's when you start to think about sizes like like this you can only imagine that they're operating with much more than this now i gave an example for instance you talked about quantum computing i gave you an example um maybe about a hundred shows ago where the technology in my brand new samsung s6 s6 was equivalent to what was in the jet fighters of the 80s So the jet fighter cpu in speed per flops which is or teraflops per second was in flops per second the same speed as what my phone had it was a quad core they didn't have quad core anywhere in the in the uh, the commercial market but in the military they certainly had them and the amount of or MIPS, let's call it MIPS, that's million instructions per second. The amount of MIPS that my phone could do was the same as the jet fighter could do. So you have to think about that. At the time, we had a DX4 100. That was it, 100 megahertz. But in the jet fighters, they had way more. And now it's only equivalent to what's in my, on my mobile phone now. So if they're 40 years in advance of us, you can't imagine what they've got now what's the military working with yeah they talked about that deep blue or big blue or whatever it was computer mm -hmm. well 
thinking about I was watching something it's not a sideline but this will understand where where I'm coming from Google said that about 10 years ago they thought they were right on the cusp of an AI but they were wrong they knew they were wrong and they thought they'd got it but now they're absolutely silent on it completely silent having yeah. having these little you know that little speaker thing like siri in every room of your house they say get one of these things you can put it everywhere you just talk to it like you're on star trek you know computer what's the weather today the weather outside is 26 degrees um, <laughs> you can ask it anything uh, can, can you just make sure you you remind me to get the milk on the way home? Sure thing, Dave. But when you get home, it says, <laughs> you can't do that, Dave. Open the pod bay doors, Wait. Hal. I won't let you, Dave. That's and, and, that's and where about, we're at. How about, we're we're yeah. actually how about at the that generation point now. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. No, no, Eagle Eye. How about sorry. the generation? Oh, okay, okay, we're getting a little delayed. How about the um, the generation before that with IBM what did you think about the computer Watson and what it what it provided for people Watson. And, and I'll give you my opinion on that yeah, go ahead. I, I see I see the Watson computer now today as like an eight track tape but that's just my opinion oh my goodness <laughs> okay so that was a question answering computer Watson and correct yeah and they they put their they put that computer up against the the, the most intelligent um, competitor on Jeopardy. Yes. And they went one one on one, and I guess Watson won. But what I'm seeing now with this um, the the, uh, the quantum system, the algorithms, um, what's going on with the with the processing with AI, I see that that system being more like an eight track tape to what we're going to our future with the quantum, like you're speaking about and what I'm talking about. You know, I, I did like a track. I really did. Uh, you did? <laughs> yeah. I, I, it was just you and me. It was just you right? and me, and that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Four modes. Which one did you like the most? <laughs> Quadratic. I liked spatial. I like all four speakers. I like stereo. That's what I liked. So I don't want to put down Watson, but I'm just saying the way things are moving with quantum technology it's just amazing and i'm just glad you're keeping in touch with it because it's going like so fast you know mm. like there you know how much percent percentage of this seven seven bin is out there did you say only 15 percent? yeah t between 10 and 15 percent of what they claimed was in the documents uh so we've got more we've got more coming then i mean that's that's just that's just the beginning here you must consider there's more however i th i thought by publishing what they did publish they took a rather extraordinary stance and the stance was that they chose not to criminalize their actions as much as they could have what they did was they gave us the info without the tool set you've got to think about that all right, so the info without the tool set. So I, but the, the spying isn't going away. It's not going to, suddenly they're not going to go, oh, look, actually, it was just too, too much hassle. Couldn't be bothered looking at all this stuff anymore and turn it off. They're never going to do that. At some point, we're going to get Skynet, the, the famed yeah. predicted Skynet where it becomes so intelligent, we end up in the Matrix because skynet <laughs> would would want to uh get rid of us because we're just air breathing wastes of time once and they're bringing back the matrix yeah but the the, the whole thing is it's it's almost like about what about four years ago or so where we all were put into the matrix overnight it's almost like that i mean it, we saw the world go crazy the world has is certainly not anything like it used to be the way that the world operates is completely changed 
and it seems to be driven from way above politicians now and they used to seem to be the ones in control even though it's probably that they weren't but there is a higher higher purpose behind all the things they're doing right now i i made i made mention this week of um an announcement leading up to us you know leading up to the um came this week to the trump budget and it was uh, some of his info was leaked and he talked about increasing military spending you know uh removing uh the ability for the poor to access money because you know if you're poor you shouldn't have any money so he says um and you know we don't need arts because that's just a waste of time you know people will be right. arty, arty on their own accord so that's just funding we don't need to spend money on so we're going to increase military spending and, and defund the environmental protection agency oh yeah the epa who you don't need don't need any of that you know because right. you know, businesses right. businesses know what we don't need doing. to breathe right dave <laughs> why, yeah. why why have that i mean it, well just you know uh business has always known better than the epa right yeah so union carbide you know killed twenty thousand people in india gas leak oh yeah they knew they knew what they were doing doesn't matter you know the um <laughs> it's worse in sydney harbour we had uh, lead paint lead paint on the harbour bridge we'd been scraping it off for 50 years and it's all fallen to the ground they didn't even vacuum it up it's let it fall to the ground it's only lead paint you know it doesn't matter uh they took lead uh samples of the soil and detected lead in it so severe that they recommended that you don't let your children play there okay wow not even for half an hour that the lead is so bad that's, so that's beneath that, that one that, that, one bridge that, that reminds me of flint michigan but continue so remember when the river caught on fire do you remember in the 70s people were talking about pollution 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 it's terrible and what happened oh they just changed the lead fuel and you know the people shut up oh you don't worry about it we're okay when you land at lax airport you can't see across the airport you can't see it you can't see the fence on the other side of the airport you should be able to see it it's not that far away and i'm not talking flat earth far away either <laughs> you know <laughs> i i mean oh, come on you can see it over the horizon dave come on you can yeah, see yeah it. <laughs> yeah 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 i'm sorry i'm not a big flat earther um however <laughs> you know my friends said look they they turned up at the airport they landed and they i said look take, take some photos of the fence on the other side of the airport for me you know you should be able to see it and they said we couldn't see it the the fog he said fog and i said no it's not fog you know what time of day was it oh it's three in the afternoon it's not fog so you know the, the air quality is so bad and and no one really admits it and when i i went to school in california so in 82 83 i was there and and I don't think that sun that you see, if you live in California, the sun that I saw then isn't the same sun that I see when I'm here. The sun that I see when I'm um, in Australia is so much hotter. It's almost like, almost like, sorry, I'm moving a cat out of the way. It's almost like you've got sunglasses over California. Uh, because wow because of the amount of smog and uh Keyboard. there it's talking huh <laughs> yeah so let me see if hey, i can... did you know that i went to school in california in the 80s also Dave? Wait, did you really which school yeah. yeah well i went to a private acting school actually for, okay. a, for a short period of time yeah well while i was working i actually had a a 45 hour a week job <laughs> awesome but What? Mackie, I've got the station and it seems it doesn't seem to have done the right thing. Hang on.
All right. It looks like I'm getting everything back again. That's really weird. What's weird, my friend? What happened? Well, my co-host called me and I pulled him into the call. And as soon as he picked the call up, it dropped me off, even though he's in the oh. group call. Can we say hi to Mackie or no? Well, no, but what, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang up from you and see if I can pull him in and then I'll make an announcement for you to call back in. All right. Okay. Should I just give it, give it five, five yeah, minutes? Yeah, give it five. That'd be great. No dramas at all. Punch this, in, punch this in real quick. 267213 privacy protection. 267213 privacy protection. I'll call you back in five. All right. No dramas. Goodness me, everyone. Technical difficulties, time difficulties, goodness me. It never ends. That's all I can say. Let me see if I can add him to the invite to group call. It should ring him now. He should be able to pick this up. Come on, Mackie, you can do it. There we go. I've got Mackie on board now. Okay, what happened? Well, you know, um, it looks as though like the U.S. has got its own time zone again. Whatever okay, it so wants. Okay, so time has changed. Okay. Well, clearly it changed. <laughs> so I'm sitting down at my desk at about 10 minutes past five. I get a message. Oh, there's dead air on RR. And I go, really? No, there isn't. Surely there isn't. Mm -hmm. Solaris sh should still be going. And she wasn't. So, Mekki, you're live okay, on so thought... Revolution Radio. No, that's all good, mate. Uh, well, okay. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, so... It, I, 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 I distinctly remember the, the daylight savings, which has happened at a different time last year. Uh, maybe it's changed. Maybe Trump is in power. We do it differently now. It's all good. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So look. Um, there we I, go. Now, I've, it, your sound is a, is now, has now gotten better again, and okay. I'm just going to. We were just finishing off a conversation with Eagle Eye, who had called. Hey in, there, Eagle Eye. He's not on the call at the moment. We talked about the Vault oh. Seven, <laughs> and okay. cool. and look, my my final comment about Vault Seven is pretty funny. And you know, when you see you know Facebook memes come come shooting by you in Facebook, well, there was a nice one there. It says, "Dance like your microwave can't see you." You know, like sing, <laughs> sing like no one can hear you, well, dance like your microwave so, well, can't see you. Very funny. I, yeah, yeah. I like, I like to. No, no, it's it's funny. So I like to say here that we've said this for a long time now. We actually, in 1984, show has given you the patent numbers for these things, guys. Mm -hmm. You knew this was coming. This wasn't new news. This was. Oh yeah, yeah. I knew. Thank you very much. Uh, this is not a mystery. We, in fact, I have known about this since they introduced the NSA. A dot DLL. That's what I into said. The Mac operating system. That's exactly right. what I said, Mickey. Really? Yeah, no, I said that exact same thing. And I, did, I didn't listen. I didn't hear. I know. I know. It's okay. And right. I, I also said, I reacted to this like when you know when you have like a flatmate who's gay, and then you discover they uh -huh. they've not told you or anybody else until they come out to you and say, <laughs> oh, by the way, you know, we're crying and really is fully emotional understandably and they said i'm i've got to come out to someone yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm gay and you go well I, I always thought you were so <laughs> sorry about this bad impact here yeah. I, i've no well, there. well that's what the vault seven was like mm. i had the opposite happen to me once <laughs> <laughs> i know right? i know but look guys uh, whatever your orientation is whatever your In your spare time, be aware that uh, the new smart technology is smart both ways. Not something new. What what I find amazing though is that it has come out. Um, and, and what I find more amazing, well, was not about that, but that it leaked. So isn't anyone con TV is watching you? You know these cartoons, even in Mad. Yes, yes, it is. It's not a good thing. In front of your phone, in front of your Oh, Mickey, your audio is terrible. Wish. 
My audio is bad? Yeah, you're, you're cutting in and out, and then all your words arrive at once. So let's see what Dave, happens. You sound fine. Um, yeah. Mackie, you're, again? you're dropping out. Alright, tell you what, I just rebooted. So I'll, I'll, I'll start. But, but love to Mackie. Then there were two people me up. Uh, um, He's on a delay. Yeah, I know. You, David. That's all right. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna... we've only got a few minutes till the top of the hour. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Mackie, but it's uh, disjointed. So, uh, if we've only got like a minute before the top of the hour, and what we what we might do, Mackie, I know we. I'd, I'd love for you to be able to um, to to let's go through the topic of the day when we come back from the break, but um, if you if Mackie's audio, I think he's going to I think he's going to call back. Um, if his internet isn't very good, what we might do is just uh, continue on with what we're doing now, and we'll see how. Yeah, we go. let's do it, Dave. Yeah, I got yeah. Some good notes here for us. Oh, awesome! So I did look at mm -hmm. that. I did look at that thing. Um, but uh, twenty six seven two one three. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. What did you think? I didn't have enough time to go through it, but I will. <laughs> okay. I will do that in the break. Okay. So for all of those, all of those people out there who are just about to Google this, so was it twenty six one seven three? Correct. Twenty six dash seven dash two one three, and then after the break, we can talk about uh, twelve dash three 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 also. Yeah, awesome. Well, you know, the only real privacy is the one you don't have. Right. But isn't it, if, if we're not afraid, then what's the big deal, right? Yeah, that's true. Well, there's the music. We'll see you on the other side of a short break. This is Shiny Side Out of Revolution Radio. Don't forget to donate. Thomas, a.k.a. a mad painter. I'd like you to join me Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Open Canvas. Don't forget to bring an open mind. Yes, folks, that's right. Bring an open mind to an open canvas. Again, that is Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. UFOs to government corruption. This is Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. There is no denying the world is awakening. We see it in the global uprisings and demonstrations of the people around the planet and the new way of thinking and living that is arising naturally within each one of us and our communities. I have been a major player in this global shift and movement for over 20 years and have helped tens of thousands of people around the world change their lives and find their voice in order to help create the paradigm change we so desperately need. Join me here at Revolution Radio on the Just Bernard Show every Tuesday at noon Eastern time for two hours of powerful interviews and discussion with some of the most influential visionaries of consciousness, alternative media, and suppressed knowledge. We promise to reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience.
your data safe? Do you have the necessary information to assist you in confidently living through just about any survival situation? Is survival and gardening, off-grid living, medical knowledge, or even natural or man-made EMPs on your list of personal concerns? Do you have your documents and your personal information in a safe place in your hands where you know where it is? Well, check out our preloaded EMP proof thumb drive. Over three gigs of survival documents and how to's, plus the USDA offline food preservation website and much, much more, including a surprise bonus we just can't tell you about here. With plenty of room left over to store your most important documents. Imagine if a mega virus or computer failure took out your bank or all the banks for that matter. Are your banking records safe in your hands so when they get things fixed and repaired, you can say, hey, look, this is what I had. You have it. I want it back. Is your personal data safe? Family records, addresses, phone numbers we'll squeeze on over to freedomslips.com yes that's www.freedomslips.com click the banner on the home page for the emp proof bullet drive to get the full scoop of everything that we offer so folks keep your data safe for your peace of mind revolution radio freedomslips.com you don't need to expect us we're already here Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent news story, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. On the go? Still want to listen? Don't have one of those fancy phones with too many buttons. Don't know what an app is? Or you don't even care? Well, we got you here at Revolution Radio. Now you can dial in 24-7 to listen to our shows. We have a number for Studio A and Studio B. And best of all, it's free. Don't forget, carrier charges for your cell phone provider may apply, though. So check with your cell provider to make sure. So ready? Here you go. Get a pen. Here's the number. Studio A is 712-432-6958. And Studio B is 716-748-0112. Thank you very much for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station in the world. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. You're back with David making shiny side out on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. That's right, the number one listener supported talk radio on the net. So push the donate button or subscribe to the archives for only $5 per month. Now that's like the cost of a coffee. Oh my goodness, that's not very much at all. I'd like to say hello to all of the new listeners that we have here today, all the people in the chat room, everyone who's subscribed liked or followed us thank you very much and we hope to get you well on your way on the journey that we've taken to this journey to find out more this journey of information isn't that what it's all about now we are currently maybe only a third of the way or halfway through depending on what jay bear is going to let us do show number 262 262 is the first of year number six on revolution radio year number six mecky hello happy Mickey. birthday happy birthday happy birthday <laughs> yeah. happy woo yeah happy birthday indeed well who's but is it it's our birthday right it's the show's birthday that's yeah. right and happy birthday to you soon yes yeah 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 getting older by the minute <laughs> If I make it, if I make it there, I'll be crawling, gasping for air. (laughs) Pushing across the line. How's my audio coming through, guys? Okay? Uh, It's it's okay. It's it's better now than it's been. But it's still Mm, not selling us that we've got great audio with you. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yes, it it did take me by surprise. If you're just tuning in now, well, we're halfway through our show. If you're tuning on now, you'll have heard Eagle Eye 
had called in to fill the gap luckily i was messaged by a couple of the uh, avid listeners and some friends of mine on facebook as well saying it's dead air and it came as a complete surprise because i'd even talked to solaris earlier on about four hours ago i said is it daylight savings in the u.s i said she says i don't know that's what she said i don't know i thought that's a bit weird i mean she lives in the u.s so i thought she might know that her show had started an hour earlier but she didn't tell me which is pretty funny so now yes 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 so this is 262 mackie 260 and 200 well who the who the thunk it who the thunk it i mean it's a, it's a big number and uh, we have produced well f over 500 hours worth of mm. content hundreds and i mean hundreds of pages of research notes which you're all welcome to if you like it's all good i'm slowly um, putting those up on the website by the way yeah, and as soon as I get a moment's breath, I will do the same. Uh, yeah, work at the moment for me. So apologies for the uh, lack of content as well. Um, the, the, the reason, I mean, I, I don't know if, if, if we can have two hours starting now, that is, or not. I mean, Jennifer will uh, um, let us know. But uh, let's let's see. Uh. I'm doing yeah, an experiment right now, Mickey. I'm doing an experiment. Yeah, go on. I couldn't let you come into the call if Eagle Eye had uh -huh. called into me. The moment I dropped his call, uh. weirdly enough, it then worked with you. And oh, when he was connected just then, the audio, he just connected and your video disappeared entirely and oh. your audio came good again once he disconnected now that's very okay. strange i mean i've got the nbn like the fastest thing you can get in australia that's what i've got yeah in australia <laughs> yeah, that, yeah yeah i <laughs> i got the fussing area locally in my area um <laughs> i'm the fast man in my house <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the fastest internet in my house i've got <laughs> So we'd, Mickey, what what we were talking about with Eagle Eye was, you know, Vault Seven, the release of everything. Mm. Uh, how, like, be just before the break, how we didn't expect it really. Um, I I didn't expect that they would tell us about it ever, just that we would keep running around in circles, thinking that they were doing it, never really knowing, but sort of knowing. And now that they told us, why isn't there a civil war? Yeah, why? Where's the uproar? Where's where's the? You know what? I tell you why. Because nobody really cares, or it hasn't sunk in, or they think, well, it doesn't really affect me, or you know, um, it's someone else's problem. No, the answer is actually everybody's problem, and the technology is is is, is actually well. Okay, so this technology is twenty years old, maybe older. Mm -hmm. So imagine that's that's what they've released. Imagine how much more advanced this has become, and as we're moving into a world where everything is connected to the internet and has a camera, maybe a microphone, I mean everything, your phone, eventually your clothing, your Fitbit, all of that. So we're moving into a world where data collection and data mining and analysis are going to be uh, unprecedented. Okay, everything that you do will become completely predictable. It's that if that's the world you like to live in, that's cool. That's that's that's, that's all good. But it also become completely transparent. You, you, you will be completely transparent. Um, and I mean by you, I mean Dave. Dave will be, yes, but everybody will be completely transparent. And I know this because I work with that kind of technology. <laughs> okay, so... Mackie, hmm. Mackie, think of this. Your, your audio is going well so far, but think of this. Excellent. Hmm. Think, think about this. You're wearing a Fitbit. It's streaming telemetry to your phone. And your phone apps are collecting the telemetry because it's a cloud service. The telemetry is going through the internet, mm -hmm. or they've hacked your phone, or they've hacked the, the repository of the information. Now, they'd be able to get the same kind of telemetry. I love the word telemetry because it tells you so much about something. It's all the things you need to know. 
If it's a car, it's going to be the revs, the gear, the deceleration, Gs. It's going to be the, the, the temperature of the water, the oil, the tires, everything you need. But wearing a Fitbit, they know as much about you as they did Buzz Aldrin and John yes, right. because they were wearing the same kind mm -hmm. of kit. They could see their respiration. They could see their oxygen intake. This is what it can do. But the Fitbit doesn't stop there. It knows your biorhythms. It knows when you're asleep. It knows when you're angry. It has the ability for sentiment analysis. It's got the ability to know more about you than you may know about yourself. Mm -hmm. What on earth? That's right. the, why? I, I'm not playing devil's advocate, but I'm going to say, why would they want to know that about anybody? <laughs> Because I I'm, so, I'm naive, Mickey. I've got my naive, my naive hat on. No, no, I get that. And and it's not okay. So there there's this this whole bunch of information in, in and of itself, completely useless. So okay. knowing all of that will get you exactly nowhere. So I can I can have all this information for every single person on the planet, and and it will mean nothing to me. Okay, it it, it won't unless I have got a specific question about David. Um, you know, where is David? How's he doing? The information doesn't actually do anything for me. What what it does though, in total, in totality, overall, if I have to analyze all the data I have collected, and that's now a lot, guys, as you know, it's a lot of data out there, right? Forget about this 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 uh, Nazi era uh, vision, or even the Stasi East Germany or Russia vision of having a room full of people monitoring everyone else in the bunker, you know, uh, spying on everybody else. Forget that. That doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. There might be some human operators. What it is now are massive data correlation engines collecting all of the data from everyone all the time in real time, mm. meaning right now. What that gives you, if you have the capacity to analyze that data, if you've got algorithms that are smart enough, and they do, you can predict, you can predict, well, anything. Down to the individual, you can predict the movement of people. You can predict when a when a, when a demonstration will become ugly. You can predict how to make a demonstration become ugly. You can predict how people will uh, operate on a city level, on a country level, on a on a continent level even. So this information that is out there is extremely powerful if you can analyze it, and they can, they can. So George Orwell's 1984 was was a naive. A vision, a naive construct, uh, you know, that you would, uh, like, if you're looking at fascism in kindergarten, that's what it is. People spying on people. Completely un impractical. Mm -hmm. There's a human factor, you know, there's still empathy and people will, you know, they won't do the right thing by whoever makes the rules. What we have introduced today, well, not today, but what we know can exist today, is the complete Orwellian panopticon, where there are no guards. You think there are, though, and in fact, there are in a way, but not humans. No one is watching you. No human being. What you are now dealing with are flagfall words, right? You know, set up flags, you know, or, or, or mm -hmm. alerts mm -hmm. as if certain words are used, if certain actions are taken, and those are then singling you out for special attention potentially by human operators. But the entire system is completely automated. In fact, we've pushed for we we've pushed for it. I mean, our insatiable hunger for the internet of everything has pushed us where we are. Okay, again, I, I think it is a, it is, the internet is both. It is, it is, it is a, a, a boon as well as a burden or even a, maybe even a, a dooms device, if you will. And I mean this in, 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 in this way. So, for, I mean, generally speaking, the internet is, is a good thing and maybe unintended so because it allows for the free exchange of information, ideas, maybe more than we need, you know, if you look at uh, what people are exchanging as, as far as information is concerned. But so it, it's, it's pretty much unhampered. But conversely, we are giving information away. We're giving it away uh, and, and we're giving it away without even knowing. Okay, we're giving it away without even knowing. Facebook is a good example where we, we put things in we probably wouldn't. Maybe if you're a smart person, you don't do that. But even the things that you don't give away, they can deduce by all the other information. If you leave, if you leave a trail of breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. right, they can follow it. 
uh, it's it's which sites you go to. It's it's where you are uh, from your Fitbit. I mean, your phone and your Fitbit together are the perfect monitoring machine. They, they know where you are. They know how you feel. They know what you're doing. They know if you're sleeping. They know how you're sleeping, like Dave said. Yeah? Now, this is really, really important. Now, yes, yeah, so they can see. Dave, you're right, Dave. They can see all of this in real time. Okay? So if you see, do you remember the movie um, uh, X-Men? And, and Dr. X's, uh, Professor X's, uh, this big room? Mm -hmm. where, where he can see all the other telepaths and the other human beings like that. Okay, imagine that, except there's no human interface. So everybody's in this holographic matrix doing whatever they're doing, and that can be represented in real time. So there's somewhere, there's, there's a connection, there's like a farm of supercomputers, you know, uh, uh, pet petabytes of storage, petabytes of computing power, and they're analyzing us as, as we go along. Um, now, it's not infallible, and, and you can't predict everything, but I think they're pretty darn close to knowing exactly how we behave, exactly what we do. And that, my dear friend, is why there is no revolution, why there is nobody climbing on the walls. If this was 1920, 1870, 1770, mm -hmm. very different reaction to anything like that. Mm -hmm. Very, very different reaction. We have become, for the most part, people in the first world, um, apathetic. We are. We are. We're completely um, ineffective, and, and and we're not revolutionary material. We've got too much to lose. Plus, whenever something happens, they can. They, these are very subtle mechanisms. You know, they can just put, play a certain ad, play certain music, or certain music, or in the elevator, or maybe make the traffic go smoother so you don't become angry. There's there's a there's a myriad of of little techniques that can be used to control human emotions and not have. The revolution happening it's it's um i love that mickey that was a really good point so the controlling of traffic lights mm. so that your karma you know mm. if they had a traffic light that only let one car through before it went red again you'd be so furious <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. i could just see it's that true happening. yeah yeah, small little things. It's it's little things. Don't think of massive, world-changing things. It's the little things that determine have a knock-on effect. Determine how you feel. If, if you start out, you, you wake up in the morning, leave your house, and a car uh, very inconsiderately splashes you. you. You're upset for most of the rest of the day, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody slams the door in your face, you're upset for most of the rest of the day. Uh, if if however you've got a positive experience. Um, that then that has a knock-on effect, and you're probably more likely to be courteous to someone else, and so on and so forth, right? So. If good things or a good thing happens to you in the morning or during the day, chances are you will have a better day than uh, if, if that hadn't happened. And tiny things, it's little things. Like if someone cuts me off in traffic, I get really upset. That's just me, right? But if 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 someone didn't do that, then uh, or even let me in, I, I feel very differently for the rest of the day. So and and these little mechanisms they can employ to manipulate your emotions. Don't think of great big acts of, of mass control or anything like that. These are very subtle ways of controlling. In fact, so subtle, you have no idea they're happening. None. You don't know. What's that movie, Mickey, where he was being filmed? He was the only real person. Everyone else was actors. Uh, the Truman Show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in The Truman Show, that's the way that they played him. Yes, in, in a very exactly. similar manner. That's right. So, but Mackie, Mackie, you said something then which surprised me uh, from from you. Um, I think you're playing it. I think you're 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 telling the truth. I think you're telling the right story here. What I messaged Mackie, um, you know, five minutes ago, uh, where he <laughs> agrees that they can see it in real time. My message was, if they were able to detect everybody all the time then they'd be able to ramp up a frequency for like for those harp frequencies you know the earth's um megahertz its breath if they changed that frequency they could see the results in real time mm -hmm. was where i was going with that but mecky you're right they could change and influence you in a way that is unseen and unknown by you one of those is yeah by playing the ad that you see posted on the side of the road or on a billboard just for you. Yes. 
It could it could well, be tailored, exactly. no, remember, and the wording can yeah. be different just for mm. you. Exactly. If you remember the movie, um, uh, what was it? Um, it was a uh, with Tom Cruise. It was interesting. It was a Philip K. Dick book, a Minority Report. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's exactly the world that they were inhabiting only some maybe forty or fifty years into the future from us, maybe less. Where in fact all advertising is tailored completely to you. Where all interactions are completely tailored to you. Where your needs are taken care of before you understand that you have those needs. Mm -hmm. That's the world we're going to move in. Like for example, you're running out of milk and eggs in your fridge right now it's a trivial thing and then before you know it there's a delivery of milk and eggs to you now you can reject it right if you don't want it of course you can but but you go oh, this is yeah that's what i need thank you very much it becomes more subtle than that right you know people might be nudged into relationships people might be uh, coerced into um i don't know signing up for things that they had that hadn't occurred to them right it's 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 really it's it's total life control we're moving into here. It is the ultimate goal of the people that are running this place. It's also like complete life control uh, of of everyone, of everyone that matters. And by, the, by that I mean I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful to people that are poor or, or aren't uh, uh, connected to technology. But but in the scheme of things, to the elite, those people don't matter. They really don't matter, and that's that's horrible. But that's exactly how they think. Uh, yeah. Unless you're a first world person with a uh, computer access uh, and a job or, you know, and you vote or not vote, it doesn't really matter. But if you're not part of that, that group of people, then they don't really care what you do at all. And chances are, in fact, that uh, um, if you become a problem, they'll just kill you outright. Like we've seen, I mean, there's, there's, there seems to be a complete disregard of human life. In, in poor countries. And we, we always go, oh, how is this possible? I mean, uh, Rwanda, half a million people died in, in a few weeks, uh, you know, uh, in horrific ways. And, and, and over here, this in Yemen, thousands, tens of thousands of people, you, you don't hear about that, do you? Uh, you know, in, in, in the Balkans, thousands of tens of thousands of people died in, uh, in the Iraq war, a million people died. Um, yeah, so what? Is what they're thinking, right? So what? If if it's it's horrible if uh, an American dies, it's in the news in the paper, right? That's that's the attitude, for example, or for any first world nation. Everybody talks about it. Or a German backpacker was attacked in India, for example, right? Woo! One German backpacker. Uh, so uh, you had a population of eighty million, right, and going to like to to a country of of a billion and a bit, and and one person has a bad experience. That becomes news, right? That's a little. A little um, out of kilter. Uh, recently, uh, an Australian a woman and a uh, British uh, man were accused of killing a uh, an Indonesian um, policeman mm -hmm. uh, at the beach. Um, I guarantee you, that wasn't the only murder that happened that day. <laughs> okay, but because of who was involved, uh, people cared more because the consumers of the news, you and me. Are what matters the consumers of of the content right do you understand what i'm saying here mm -hmm. so there's something, this there, this this go on. there's something no, no, go on. weird there's something weird about that case because her name is sarah oh, yeah. connor i know right that uh, when i first i go wow there she is yeah. come with me if you want to live <laughs> <laughs> no that's right um so sorry dave again to to, to go back to your original point of of why why is there more of a public uproar? It's because of that. I think these these things are being deployed. But I also believe that we've become a little shell shocked. Uh, no, uh, let me put it this way. Let, give me an explanation. In the 1950s, television was pretty G-rated. Television, movies, you didn't mm -hmm. see people really kiss, or you didn't see anybody that got shot just got shot and they just uh, crumbled and fell down, right? So there was no no great deal of violence or realism. Uh, that that changed over the decades. And now these days, I don't even know what the latest statistics are, but by the time you're like 10 or 12 years old, you've seen 10,000 murders or something like that, right? Um, so so we've, we've become desensitized. So similarly here, all these disclosures that have come about, all these things that have happened, uh, uh, look, Obama's administration spying on, on world leaders, spying on the American people, you know, phone call conversations being recorded and all that, other scandals that have broken through, you know, I mean, it started with Watergate to some extent, I guess. Uh, like a big one, um, and then you know you've got conspiracy theories everywhere. Like there's like a, there's a conspiracy theory overload. Okay, people are, and as soon as you say conspiracy theory, you're already you're shoved off to the left or the right of the spectrum somewhere, right? No one wants to really talk to you, listen to you, 
And when all of a sudden these things are revealed that conspiracy theorists have been talking about, mm -hmm. I think there is a, a subconscious disbelief or subconscious, well, that, clearly it can't be as bad or clearly it doesn't matter or, or something. Something is going on in your brain that doesn't allow you to process it completely. I'm talking about the great uh, mass of people, not, not certain individuals. Do you, you know, know why people. I think that is? Go on. It's because they've already dismissed it. Yeah. As crazy yeah. talk. Yes. Yeah. And so when it comes true, they go, oh, there's no sense in even worrying about that. Yeah. Why, why, you go, why should I? And, and like you jump up, and Mekki, I do, I do this yeah, and I know you I do know. this and I know all the listeners do this. I'm pulling my hair out and I don't understand mm. why people aren't complaining. Yeah. I mean, for crying out like the, the, the government hacked your television mm -hmm. with a tool and your mm -hmm. phone. With the tool, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I can see how that would be useful for them. It's just like that CSI. You know, I'm sorry, sir. The uh, the camera in the street has been destroyed. Well, don't don't we have eyes on it? Oh yeah, well, there's <laughs> there's you know 80 people with mobile phones, and one yes. of them is filming it right now on live stream. But instead of looking at the stream, we'll just hack the camera. Yes. And we can see that camera. Can't we get closer with the audio? Yeah, the guy doing it, the perpetrator's got a mobile phone in his pocket. Let's turn yes. his audio on. Yes. That's right. If they're doing that for their advantage, and they've only just leaked it to us, where we'd always thought they could do it anyway, mm -hmm. then it means they can use it now. Because but before, no, no, think, think, the, think, what think more about, they can do. Well, right? think about them not being able to solve a case by saying, well, we had, you know, 45 people with mobile phones or cell phones in their pocket, and we've got mm. recordings on each one of them saying the same thing. Yeah. Placing those now, people, the perpetrators, at the scene of the crime. Now, there, there are two things here, but keep going with your point. There are two things well, that we need to think about yeah. after this. So. Well, so my point is they weren't able to use this in court because it would have given their hand away. There you go. Yeah, that's one. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's one of them. And and for me, that's very important. It's like the Enigma machine, solving it in real time, but not being able to act on anything you've, you've discovered. Because mm -hmm. then the opposition would have known that you knew and that somehow you'd broken the code. Yes. So you're right. Now there are two considerations here which are overarching or overarching this. One is I predict uh, not too far into the future there will be technology free zones, meaning people will choose to not be part of this and any use of technology will be completely prohibited. It will it will in fact form two strata of society. This probably will be a minority movement, but it will happen. Mm. There will be no technology at all allowed in these encla en enclaves and it will become some kind of thing that the government monitors and eventually will probably crush. Two, if you have access to all information, as I've uh, just outlined, and, and as Dave has described, as a, as a sort of a scenario where, you know, an incident can be monitored by 50 people with mobile phones in the street, for example. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, and, and we know that they can do that, now what they can do as well, and I'm telling you this because it's true, they can manipulate that information to fit their agenda. What does that mean? So, so rather than capturing the truth of, of, of the things, you've got 50 different points of view, like, which are all good because they're, they're showing the same thing and you could have a perfect analysis of whatever is happening, right? You could because you, if you've got the truth from 50 different angles. That's right. But what, what can happen and what really is happening is that this information can and will be manipulated to show whatever they want it to show. So it might show, um, uh, I don't know, let's say... Um, uh, a white man killing uh, a, a white woman. That's that's the truth of it. There you go. That's that's just a scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't fit my agenda. So I'm going to change the information, right? Even even as it's it's, it's as it's streamed live, because mm -hmm. I now have that computing power, to saying a black man is killing a white woman, because that that fits my agenda better. So that is the level of sophistication that we have reached already. As it happens, you can make the change. As it happens, yeah, that, that's exactly right. So, so Dave made a good point. Sorry, uh, he's, he's uh, messaging me. The movie Running Man does exactly that, right? Uh, as, as a foreshadowing. And and today, 
with with the technology that we have, we can do that. A lot of people believe that 9/11, in fact, was done or, or um, manipulated in, in a similar fashion, right? I, I saw some mind-blowing videos recently, or documentaries, I should say, that question a whole bunch of things, and the questions are valid. And, and if you really look at, you know, analyze it to to a certain depth, you go, "Wow, oh, that's actually very scary." And guys um, and girls, <laughs> when I say guys, I mean guys and girls. Uh, it's it's really up to us to decide what kind of life we want to live. I mean, ask yourself, does this invasion of your privacy, your space, your home, your castle, um, sit right with you? Is it something you can accept? Is it something that, that, is, some, that is desirable? Do you want that to happen? Some people, you know, they, they, I'm sure they want this to happen. Or do you not? And if you don't, then ask yourself, why haven't you reacted stronger? Now, this is not just America. If you have a Samsung TV, and Samsung was one of the brands that was mentioned specifically, mm -hmm. uh, smart TVs. Like if you, if you, if you, like my TV is, is uh, ooh, eight years old, doesn't connect to the internet, doesn't have a camera, none of that, right? Um, you know, is that an, an, is that an intrusion you, you wish to participate in. I mean, it's convenient to have a TV like that. You can browse the internet, you get lots of content, you get Netflix, uh, whatever it's called. That's awesome, right? That's, that's a good lifestyle, I think. Sure. But what is the flip side here? They look into your living room. They're listening on your conversations. <coughs> at, at any point in your life, do you think you'll be in a position where this could be disadvantageous to you? Is there any point in your life that you think this could be used against you? Well, the answer is you don't know. You don't know if it can, and you don't know how they can manipulate it to show something else. Okay, guys, so I, I'm with Dave, and I, I'm really, well, I'm not surprised that nothing happening, that nothing is happening from a, from a reaction point of view. I am, I am disappointed, and I'm concerned. Okay, I really am. It's, 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 it's something that George Orwell could not have dreamt up mm -hmm. in, his, in his wildest dreams. And he had some insights here. Okay, this is the like I said, it's it's the perfect panopticon. It's it's it's, uh, it's RPA, robotic process automation for total human control. <laughs> you know that Orwellian nightmare describes today. Mm -hmm. That it does. Mm -hmm. So the expression was derived from the George Orwell book, nineteen eighty four. Yes, it was, and and still is to me to be something extraordinary that yep. we don't resist this. Neki, you know those technology-free areas? They're like hospitals, for instance. In a hospital, yes, you, you go into yeah. a hospital now and as they have, it's impossible to get a, a mobile phone or cell phone signal. Mm -hmm. You go into a, uh, a movie cinema, so you can't stream it out. They've mm -hmm. now got a you know a radio frequency dead zone inside there yep. i see people doing this on a higher and higher you know let's mind the pun frequency yeah and doing this and, and and spreading this out i think the freedom and peace movements of the 60s are what would be the shape and the form and maybe the percentage of population in against these technologies as they're being pushed upon us. See, yeah. Mekki's right. At the top of this discussion, we we talked about, you know, it's all done for a benefit. You know, there's, you know, all of the wars were all, you know, it's we want to going to keep you safe. All the technology, you know, we want we don't want anything to go wrong with you. We want to keep the, you know, it's all about you and your safety. So we're going to mm. go to war mm. to protect you. Now all of this is around, it's a flipped up. Here's all the things you can do. These are awesome. I imagine as a back room where they've already, they've already dreamt up the next way of being able to get telemetry on us and they're trying to fit it into an app somehow to sell us the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. Something we don't even know. I didn't think we'd have a, you know, Fitbit, but you know, well, guess what? I found one this week. And if you've seen, oh, what was that? The remake where Arnie has his memories. Remember that? Oh, Total Recall. 
Total Recall, thank you. In the new version of Total Recall, where the guy had the, the cell phone in his palm of his hand, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, new scientists have just released an article this week that said there's new tattoos that could pave the way to on-skin cell phones. Oh, yes. This, in fact, it's, it's already part of television uh, shows. Uh, recently, I watched uh, Madame Secretary, and they embedded a camera into the skin and, and hit it with a tattoo. Um, so so all, of, all of these amazing um, jumps or leaps forward in technology, they're with us today. It's all with us today. You think um, science fiction is science fiction? It's not. It's not. It really isn't. Um, do you see it every day? No, you don't. I mean, it, trust me. Whatever you can buy in the consumer market is 20 generations behind what the military has. Mm. They have got trillions. In fact, Trump is just uh, putting another $54 billion, if I remember correctly, 50-something billion dollars into... Uh, that's, that's the biggest. That is the biggest increase since Ronald Reagan in defense spending. Oh, but you, since Ronald Reagan. He's not printing <laughs> the money. He's no. denying arts and welfare, yeah. and there's another one. Mm -hmm. oh. In fact, in fact, all of uh, education as well. There's there's a lot of <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of civic and civil programs are being taken out for for number one, increase defense spending, and number two, pay for the wall. That's right, wow. you're paying for the wall. Yeah. <laughs> that's who's paying Got for a it. Bit of wall. So so so, but Mickey. I posted this week something interesting and to do with that spending and if you talk to any historian any historian and you ask them one question about they how they rate a society mm -hmm. in the past it'll be on their arts mm -hmm. it's all about yeah. the oh, arts, yeah, no, no, absolutely. right? So yeah. the moment, the moment you see, and I, I also made the parallel comparison to Australia. Our, oh, that's right, the EPA or the climate scientists. Blah, don't need them. Don't need the EPA. You know, let's give business cuts to the big business because they know what they're doing, right? Who needs the mm -hmm. EPA? And we mm. can get all that money, and we can build a bigger military. Well, America has currently the total spend of the worldwide military spend from all the countries that's its spend now oh got to be mm -hmm. bigger need more spending against that's what right. i mean what's going to happen what in well, what, what conversation <laughs> mackie came what was it they were talking about where they go oh we've got to do this we need more military spending yeah mm -hmm. they've flown b-52s to south korea right now right. and they're already mm -hmm. talking up uh, this is the cnn's and the foxes are already already talking up a preemptive strike against north korea i don't think that's at all uh, un uh, 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 unlikely at all i think it's very likely uh, having said that now we don't know if all the news are true but if if, if this uh, if if this uh, insane leader <laughs> i have to call him because he, he has to be insane kim jong-un is completely unhinged if he did what he did you know the testing the long-range missiles and telling everybody yeah we're testing missiles to see you know how quickly we can reach the u.s you got to be a moron to do that so for, so far <laughs> in the old world that we left behind uh, when trump was elected it was unthinkable that america would um, uh, have a preemptive strike against a nuclear capable nation just wouldn't mm -hmm. happen never happened will never happen can't happen so that that's pretty much the the because, credo because of the term mad mutually assured destruction yeah yeah and even if it's a small localized exchange it's it's still uh, worse on, on on a magnitude to that that outshines and that's no pun here uh, uh mm -hmm. fukushima <laughs> so fukushima was bad uh, limited uh, regional nuclear exchange is worse <laughs> okay uh, a full, uh, an all-out nuclear exchange is unthinkable. So, so this I think it is now possible. Um, I think it's now possible for. Uh, and I believe that the two nations that would be struck are North Korea and Syria. I think that's why the defense budget has gone up. I think uh, Trump does want to close off Fortress America. He wants to. The, the world that Trump, and I, I've got nothing against him, and what he's doing, he's doing for America, he's doing for himself, I get it, right? And not, not so good for the rest of the world. He does want to um, sort of close America off, make it safe, make it like a parkland, I guess, whatever. 
uh, and and then the rest of the world he wants to control with an iron fist. Um, and maybe Putin has got the same he has got the same uh, ideology, and maybe they're going to work together doing that, achieving that. I don't know. The point is though that that uh, North Korea and Syria are high high level targets, and because of the increase. Sorry, he's asking for more money. He hasn't got it yet. So this is like a, like a pre-budget he, he released. Mm -hmm. And the, the real one is going to come out in a couple of months. He leaked his budget. Yeah. So so we know that he wants that money. And and, and since I, I said, it's the biggest increase since Ronald Reagan. And he had the Star Wars program. Um, any defense budget increase of this magnitude has always foreshadowed a war or some form of military deployment. Uh, and this one is going to be significant. Much bigger than Iraq. Okay, at least that, clearly from the money that's being asked for, the, the planning is, is going, this is going to be a bigger effort than any of the Gulf Wars, uh, probably on, on, on a scale similar to, um, to World War II, uh, as far as uh, resources expenditure is concerned. Um, and I would, uh, I would say that there would be a, a preemptive strike against um, ISIS, but Syria at the same time, ISIS, Syria. So these are two different things, guys, in case you don't know, uh, as well as North Korea. And, and while we're cleaning up, why not? Establish bases closer to China, and and potentially Russia. Uh, you know, so so it, it is really I think meant to uh, assure America's supreme position in in the balance of power in the world. That's that's what I think this 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 military spending is going to achieve. Bear in mind that an aircraft carrier costs a billion dollars, just one, right? And so so potentially you can build another fifty-eight. So just that's just a, that's the kind of money. Hmm. And right now, I think there are six or seven fleets that have uh, aircraft carrier support. The Chinese have just built one or two. First time ever they have done that. These are having aircraft carrier fleet groups is the game changer for conventional war uh, in the world right now. Okay, if you don't have that, you, you're not a player. Forget it. Nuclear weapons, well, they're pretty finite. They, they can't, you know, <laughs> this is the thing. You can destroy lots of stuff, but you have to actually be able to hold it too. So you have to deploy ground forces, right? And, and that's what those fleet groups can do uh, with aircraft support from the aircraft carriers. Now, so one of those costs a billion, so you could potentially build another four, five, 10, 20 fleets if you wanted to and, and, and other things as well. So it's a lot of money that's going to go there. Uh, it's a volatile North Korea is, is, is run by this unhinged guy. At least he's being reported in our press as unhinged. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's done none of these things. But I think he has, some of it at least. Dave, I'm, I'm a little concerned where this is all heading. And um, with, with if Clinton had been elected, I could have told you exactly what would have yes. happened. Uh, now, with, with Donald, though, in the House, uh, it has become unpredictable. Um, that's not a bad thing, necessarily. But it certainly leaves us wondering, right? Well, it's one of the things that leads me down the garden path, Mackie. I'd, and the garden path at my house makes hmm. me question things. As soon as I see that they want to increase military spending, when you've got the biggest one on the planet, uh, what do they know that we don't know? Why is it suddenly now an issue? Well, that's right. What about that crumbling infrastructure? Exactly. You know, Oroville yeah. Dam is has only got chewing gum and string fix on it. I subscribed hmm. today to a fellow who's one of the civil engineers that that fixed or put the patches in place so that they could operate the hydroelectric scheme once again, because that's had to mm -hmm. be turned off. So mm -hmm. where they're getting the power from in that ailing power grids that you have in the US. Yeah. The, we have the same kind of terrible grid that no one spent any money on. They got so bad we had to sell them to someone else and our power has gone up 100% in 10 years, the cost of the power. That's right. One of the most r ridiculous things I've heard of, just just as a little sidetrack here, Mickey, and mm. I don't, don't want to depress everyone, not too much, and that is that we have a hydroelectric scheme on our snowy mountain. It's a mountain, it's, it just gets an annual snowfall and uh, they have hydroelectric come off that i've been there it's a lo lovely setup however they're saying what we're going to do you see is have renewable energy like wind and solar pump the mm -hmm. water back up so it can go back through the hydro again okay uh, from what i have i've done the calculations it takes more energy to pump the water uphill than you do get through the loss of the hydro system so yeah that means you may as well not do that and just supply power directly to the grid you're supposed to be supplying anyway. 
And with climate change the way it is, there won't be any snowfall on the top of that hill anyway, and it's all going to become useless within five years or ten years or whatever the, the estimates are. This is the kind of preposterous thinking. Oh, um, Elon Musk says, yeah, let's put batteries. We can solve your South Australia problem. We'll just put some batteries in. Well, the batteries will cost about a billion dollars. I didn't want to spend anything near that at all. They want to spend that. And they've got this Australian guy who's heading up some power project. And he goes, yeah, yeah, we can we can put batteries in. And I'm thinking he's just going to get in a shop and buy some D-cell batteries. Hmm. Yeah. The way that that hmm. guy sounded, he didn't sound like he was the CEO or a visionary or he didn't have access to any technology. It sounded like he was just the guy that they'd rung up to say, how would you fix the power? And he goes, oh, I just put some batteries in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd say let say uh, Stark Industries. Yeah, he's sort of like Iron Man, right? Elon Musk today. He is. He is. He, he's he is. the Iron Man of today, <laughs> right? Yeah, he could solve that. It could go away. Never have to worry about it again. It could be the the flagship of all the every single power system on the planet. Generate the power. Use it when you need to. None of this. Oh, I've got like a little solar powered fan on my desk, but it only works when the sun's, you know, light strong enough, but it doesn't work inside. So I've got to put the fan outside where it doesn't work because I don't get the air from it. I mean, it's such a stupid idea that we have to be able to just use power when we need it. Oh, sorry, when, when it's produced, not when we need it. So the, the battery things makes so much more sense and it would bring down the cost for everybody and then all the power people could go and get stuffed. We'd have our own power. Who cares? It could be done at the household level. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do that? So the, the fact, the mere fact that our country has done just what Trump has already done, it eliminated the climate science. It's taken money away from education because who needs to be educated anymore? Who cares? Just dumb enough to be able to work at, you know, at, at a, like a blue collar task, which will eventually be replaced by robots anyway. Have, however, you have, you have died because of the vaccines and all of the, the pandemics that are coming anyway. So who cares really about that? No one really cares. So so where are we going to put our money? Mecky, we increased our military spending. Yes. Yes, we did. We did the same thing. <laughs> But that all not to the same tune though <laughs> we don't have anywhere near as much but when you do the calculation of we're about one tenth we're the gst it's the us and australia we're the gst we're 10 percent the population yeah mm -hmm. instead of 250 we, we got 25 so or just a little bit less but we don't have anywhere near the spend yes. we, we, it, the economy of scale that you guys have is crazy we don't have that and yet we're buying ridiculous amounts of aircraft which won't be delivered for in, within our lifetimes <laughs> submarines true. and some some mm -hmm. extra boats i heard the other day that we're getting all these boats what are we gonna what what conference is on what military conference oh, this is what you know what arena is this battle going to take place in now why do we have to step it up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had my rant, Nicky. Yeah. It's yours. Your turn. Oh, look, look, and I—that's true, though, right? And and um, it is the, the the problem that that we have here, though, is to generate interest. This is always the problem when with any revolution, with with any change of thought, you have to be able to generate and sustain a level of interest which can drive forward that which you wish to change or that which you wish wish to to influence. Um, and and that. It's just lacking these days. The people that could ha show an interest and sustain that interest are too poor. They're not counted. They don't have the power. They can't do anything. Nobody cares. Whereas we, who could sustain interest and who could, in fact, um, you know, show an interest, uh, don't. Not interested. Don't want to know about it. Don't care. I got my thing. Thank you very much. As we move forward, into into whatever is going to come, uh, defense spending, a war, who, who knows what, right? Um, we we need to ask ourselves what kind of world we want to live, uh, well, want to live in and leave for our children, and and I suspect that that none of us would want would want to live in a world that is that is rapidly approaching, and it will happen. And and I want to give you an example here. 
we were pretty well off <clears throat> back in the day in, in Germany and uh, even in Turkey, my family, I mean. And uh, then um, World War One came along and we were a little bit less well off. And World War Two came along and catastrophically changed our personal lives. Uh, my, my grandparents specifically. Mm -hmm. Uh, running away, um, you know, and, and carrying children on, on, a, on a bicycle and, and all these wonderful things that you do. So all the stuff that you have is gone. You're running away just to save your life. Everything you have is with you on that bicycle. You got nothing else. There's nothing. There's nothing. You have what you have and that's it. That's why Europeans, especially of the older generation, always believe in portable wealth. You know, you never know <laughs> what's going to... Not, you never know what's around the corner. So ask yourself, if you want to live in a world where you all you have is what you can carry with you as you run away right? if, because if you don't run away you will die so this these these are very stark scenarios these are stark questions but these are realities and you have to understand one other thing the people that make the decisions that that, that bring about these catastrophic changes don't care about you or what, how it affects you no interest at all zero none you, you don't you might not even exist as far as they're concerned Okay, all of these power politics, all of these wars and, 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 and you know, expressions of violence are completely um, untouchable, sorry, to them. They're com they're, sorry, I should say they're completely untouched or untouchable by those things. They're, 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 it's a game. If you play a computer game, a, a role player, a RPGs, right, um, even a first person shooter, but a strategy game. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, a strategy game. Uh, uh, you, you've got you move people around and you build resources, you build armies, and you set them off against each other. It's a game. You don't care about the little pixel that's that's just fighting the other little pixel. It's a game. Okay, and you shouldn't care because it is a game. Who cares, right? And and un unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that is exactly how they. You know, I know I'm being you know a little uh, mysterious here, a little uh, occulted, if you will. Who as to who they are? Because I don't really know who they are. I've got a fair idea of who they are, but I, you know, I can't pinpoint them. They don't care. They feel the same exact way about you. Oh, you little pixel. Who cares? And if I'm right, and they live a lot longer than we do, they care about you even less. Your life doesn't make a difference. You only live eighty years, hundred years, maybe. I've lived for thousands, maybe tens of thousands of years, maybe longer. You are two different species of 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 beings, completely different. Uh, just on that day, very quickly, because as I was preparing the show notes for today, which I, we haven't shared with you, by the way, and uh, today's show was, was going to be about ontology and the why of the hypothesis, uh, ontology being the, being the science of being. Okay, It's the science of being, you know, and, and but reality is all about and all that, mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, essentially, I had, an epi I had an epiphany, because I, I was, last, last week we, we wrapped up uh, some, some discussions around the hypothesis and how it's moving into the um, into provenance of a theory. Uh, and it is, and and then, but but I couldn't answer the question as to why we're here. Why are we here? Why, I mean, if the hypothesis is right, and it, I, I think it is, large tracts of it anyway, then there must be a reason as to why we're here. And I, I had an epiphany. I realized, okay, wow, yeah, uh, actually, well, that makes sense. So I, I thought it through, and I looked at ontology. I looked at uh, quantum decoherence. I looked at the observer effect. I looked at the uncertainty principle. I looked at the double slit experiment again i looked at quantum superposition and you're going to me well what the what the what the who does that mean <laughs> <laughs> uh, i won't explain to you i won't explain to you this week i'll explain to you next week but 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 bear just 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 uh, be aware 